Today, on behalf of our amazing team, I'm proud to announce Willow. Willow is Google's newest and most powerful superconducting quantum computing chip. Google just made a quantum leap forward, pun intended. Google just released their new chip, Willow, which has made huge leaps and bounds in the field of quantum computing. Exploring a vast array of options all at once. And like nature, quantum computing is responsive to the environments it works within, leading us to new breakthroughs for tomorrow's most challenging problems. Introducing our latest quantum computing chip, developed to learn and evolve like the natural world around us. Willow, from Google Quantum AI. So Willow has said to be making calculations that is super fast, that like within five minutes, it would take a supercomputer, the fastest supercomputer at this point in time, it would take it 10 septillion years which is so big is 25 zeros, right? Random circuit sampling benchmark. The results are pretty surprising. By our best estimates, a calculation that takes Willow under five minutes would take the fastest supercomputer 10 to the 25 years. That's a one with 25 zeros following it, or a time scale way longer than the age of the universe. I will have that much money, but this to quantify how long 25 or 10 septillion years is, it's longer than the age of the universe if it was in years. So <laughs> that's a long time. So basically a computer, the fastest computer we have, supercomputer we have right now, this quantum computer can do that within five minutes, which would take the supercomputer longer than the age of the freaking universe to do. Crazy. And so it seems like this is pretty good because this is not like the end goal. This is just another step on their roadmap, as they say. But it's getting even better because this thing called the qubits are getting better. So they went from like three by three to five by five to seven by seven, meaning like these qubits are like bigger. And the bigger the qubit, I believe, it means that it's better computing is a better computing power and so quantum computers don't use like ones and zeros like how a normal computer use i think they use these qubits in order to do quantum computing which is pretty crazy not only that they said that the time where these qubits are stable went from like 10 microseconds to like 105 microseconds and like microseconds sound like a long or a short period of time but that's a huge significant jump that's like like a 10x jump or it's like a 10x jump to the next you know longer length meaning that these things these qubits stay stable for a lot longer meaning you can do a calculation or a bigger calculation for a longer period of time than you could in their previous chip their previous chip could do like something that a supercomputer can do within 10,000 years so their previous chip what would take a supercomputer 10,000 years, it will take the previous chip like five minutes to do. So this one is like multiple times, like to the power of something times more powerful than this, which is pretty crazy. I think this is going to be a huge deal when it comes to AI in the future, because not only did they reach that benchmark, they reached below the threshold, which means that when quantum computing happens, one of the major issues is the errors that happen within, within quantum computing. Since they're like, you know, calculating huge, like macro, macro level computations. If one problem goes wrong in the calculations, it's basically game over for the whole entire, you know, computation. Think about this. If you ever did any type of math problem in your life, you know that having a number wrong, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing wrong would be game over for everything you have to do with that equation. It will be wrong, just that one step. So imagine this now quantum computer who is doing 25 septillion, longer than the age of the universe, millions of years long numbers of calculations within five minutes. Think about what happens if you got one number wrong. It would be game over. The calculation would be null and void. So. That would suck. So having it be less error prone, and I think it cut it down by like 50%, and now it's below this thing called the threshold, which is very significant for like the error rates when it comes to quantum computing, it's a real game changer. And this thing is still just going. They're still doing research, and they're looking to make sure that these things are 
more stable and are able to do like computations in the long run i think in the long run this is going to change fields like ai of course because think about how good ai is right now but think about how good ai would be if it can do the same type of processing powers like billions of times fast <laughs> it can think like it can outthink you like in a millisecond just how fast and crazy that would be it would also be good for like logistics for like a larger scale problem like let's say if you wanted to feed the world i don't think we have like the data models and the computational power to understand the, the exact logistics of that so this will open up new possibilities i think they also talked about like material sciences where this can bring up new possibilities of what kind of materials can be made with quantum computing because it can do the calculations you can make maybe even new genetics with this type of thing research can maybe be done within like a few seconds or a few minutes this is absolutely insane but i have to talk about the cons as well because if this thing is thinking that fast and processing that fast what happens if like these super quantum computers gets into the wrong hands like even in bad government hands like we already have like you know these like d-day bombs that's like you know have wiped out just like islands and countries or whatnot <laughs> so what happens if it got into the wrong hands as far as warfare or even like you know spying and listening we already have like a lot of that happening right now with like if you ever said anything or researched anything on like online and then you see it pop up in your ads or whatever what happens if that's like that also is times like millions and millions of time of processing it's gonna maybe get really creepy and it may really get to know you very well very fast which may, you know, make you feel a little uncomfortable. And so that's where I'm also thinking about it because yes, these are good and technology is gonna only continue, but it's also cool to think about or not cool. It's also interesting to think about what other people can use this for if it's not for feeding the world, ending hunger, you know, those type of things. What if it's like more for control or more for politics with all the misinformation going on now? What if the quantum computer can really counteract everything you can think of when it comes to like elections or anything like that? And it can think about a counter argument. It can think about the perfect way to keep you encapsulated into a bubble or keep your mind, you know, on this track. So that's also something to think about as well. That being said, if you think this is cool and you think AI is cool, you should definitely like and subscribe. With that being said, your boy Dex9Dexter out.